returning to advancing with watercolor and in this particular video I'm going to talk about using the brush, different types of brushwork, uh, posture with the brush, how to hold the brush, and working thoughts when using the brush. Uh, watercolor is uniquely suited to brushwork I feel and uh, we're going to exploit some of that in this video. So the, the motif is titled Delayed and I think you understand why. It's a common scene to all of us who travel. Uh, oftentimes we're delayed in an airport and rather than spending time behind the bar I decided to do a little bit of a sketch and then develop that into a painting in the studio. So I did a black and white study and uh, developed the image that you saw in terms of tonal values and I'm pretty pleased with the way that the shapes and the arrangement, the composition uh, came out in this piece. So I'm going to develop it now into a more developed painting with color. And you see me starting with a very large brush in this case. I'm working on a sheet that's 15 by 22 and using a big mop brush that's made by Oscada, uh, Escada. It's one of Alvaro Castanet's signature brushes if you're searching for that. And uh, the brushes are unique because they hold just a, a ton of liquid and very long, very weighty, so you feel you know, you're carrying a sizable tool when you use this brush. And you can see I'm able to cover half the paper in almost one pass. Uh, this, be this is a unique feature of the watercolor brush, able to hold a lot of liquid and you can really go forever with one brush load. Here you see me <clears throat> blending. I'm blending a lot of these strokes. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm creating an underpainting, a painting that will um, have significance later in the, uh, the finished piece as it dries. And this underpainting I'm using a lot of warm hues, some yellow ochre, some cad red light, um, uh, to generate a sort of glow in the finished piece. And my strategy here is to uh, work with complements, work with uh, opposing temperature, temperature color, um, a warm underpainting followed by cooler grays on top. This combination. Uh, because of watercolor's transparency can yield these really beautiful luminous effects, the luminous effect that we see outside when light is bouncing around. And uh, the, watercolor, the watercolorist relies on this to uh, create the, the feeling that light is, is moving in the painting. So everything to this point is rather blended. We're going to let it dry. And now we're returning with a, another mop brush, but a smaller size. And uh, as I'm making the strokes, look how I'm holding the brush. It's by the last inch, right at the end of the brush. The reason for this is it asks me to use my arm, even shoulder, even back, to create these strokes. I'm standing at my table, and I'm swinging the brush almost in a pendulum fashion thinking as a, a Chinese or Japanese calligrapher might think that each stroke is important, each stroke has a bearing on the finished result and so I'm trying to think with a lot of economy in making these strokes. Uh, in the underpainting and in some parts of these shapes you'll see me blending strokes. This is to gain a sort of integrity to the shape, but uh, when it comes to the edges of these shapes, or the connections of these shapes, or sometimes the isolated strokes, I try to uh, think like a calligrapher and get it right, get it with a bit of, what can I say, joy, uh, excitement, energy to the brush stroke. These are, I know that they're kind of elusive words. How do you imbibe your stroke with energy? Sometimes the speed of the stroke creates that energy. Sometimes the edge of the stroke or the direction of the stroke. Uh, likewise, you can convey a calm energy with a very plain, flat, linear stroke. So the strokes that our brush leave behind, especially where they're exposed, has a, an emotional impact 
on the audience. And the artist tries to take advantage of this, tries to use that as a poet would, words, as a, po as a musician word, would, dynamics to kind of stir the audience and make um, a feeling grow within them uh, in response to the painting. I think this happens on a physical level. I think it happens on a subconscious level because <clears throat> our mind doesn't have time to rationalize, uh, rationalize it when we're looking at it. We simply experience it. And as a painter, uh, it's become more and more important to me to strike that connection with the audience, to have them uh, feel a certain energy, whether it's through color, in this case, in today's exercise, brushwork, shape, edges, all these things are the vocabulary that we use in our paintings. And this is, uh, you know, if I compare it with uh, my experience in oil painting, uh, the brushes are more varied, more, how to say, empathetic. <laughs> In watercolor, in other words, I feel a direct connection between um, my intention and my my brush and the way it moves across the paper. The paper, too, plays a role in this. I, I like to use arches rough because it allows me to get a variety of edges. And in some of my strokes, you'll see broken edges. Uh, I'm taking advantage of the roughness of the paper. And so we practice uh, these sorts of strokes uh, using economy, uh, using a thought of direction and energy. You can see I'm making some very angled strokes now. I should mention, because I know you're all curious, I'm using an ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna to create this cool gray. And in this particular passage, I've moved on now from the fuselage and that uh, precise stroke for the wing of the plane and the turban to a, a broader, I've switched back to a bigger brush and I'm trying to create a broader passage and I'm unifying all of these strokes to, uh, in a blending fashion, to give the shape uh, strong integrity. However, near the edges you'll see the stroke uh, plays a more vital role, the individual stroke. And as I work into this shadow, now with a bit of neutral tint and later on with some stronger uh, other colors, you'll see how the stroke kind of livens up this, this simple, I shouldn't say simple, it's a complex shape, but it livens it up and makes it feel more transparent. So there's, there's different working thoughts as we're building the painting, and after doing this for a while, um, those sought thoughts uh, start to become more automatic, and by that I mean more fluent. Uh, I like to compare it to a musician when they when they get a piece of music for the first time. It's usually in a sheet, and they study the music. They practice it multiple times. They read the dynamics. They they memorize the piece, and after they memorize it, they can perform it without having the score in front of them. You've seen concert pianists um, swaying on the bench and just closing their eyes. They Sometimes they don't even look at their instrument. And you feel they're transported and you're transported as well because they're able to put themselves into the music and really uh, give music, uh, the written music, a higher degree of uh, emotional content, dynam dynamism, uh, subtlety, all of these things. And when you know your subject very well, having practiced this once or twice, I know it much better than when I was drawing it, and I'm able to express that because I know where the lines are going to go, I know what I want to emphasize, I know sort of the stroke that I want to use to emphasize it, and so it's a matter of performing it like a musician performs. And I feel very much that watercolor has this performance aspect, and I love it. I try to 
feed into that and get a little momentum, get a little charge from it. And I feel that that uh, very often comes through in the painting. So that's a, <laughs> that's a long explanation to say that with familiarity, uh, we can perform our subject. And that performance in this case, in many of my paintings, translates into more vivid and striking brushwork. So you can see how I developed the shadow, and as it's drying, it's getting that sort of transparency, that gradation that I was striving for. I'm adding some darks now into that shadow, using a smaller sabolette brush, still pretty much working on the back end. Uh, the only real time that I move my hand to the front of the brush is when I need to rest my hand on the paper and get a very uh, precise highlight, um, a sharp edge, or need some precision, which is typically only uh, in the final stages of the painting. So for the most part you see that I'm, I'm really holding this brush and moving it uh, by using my, uh, my whole arm. You can't see me, but I'm gripping the brush by the end. I'm standing. A lot of these strokes, especially the <clears throat> early strokes, had a broad motion. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was swinging my arm. Oftentimes the stroke comes from a larger muscle that way, the shoulder muscle or the back muscle. And this, uh, in the long run, gives you more control. We think we have the most control when we're using our fingers but if you're painting with any sort of scale or making big shapes which you should always be doing you need to be able to utilize a bigger muscle group so a lot of information on brushwork and I hope that this uh, gives your paintings uh, some of the control and and spontaneity that you're looking for I know that it's helped me Along the edge of the shapes, you see sometimes I switch to a smaller brush to get a little extension of that shape. So I'll build the shape with a large brush and then uh, sort of attack the edges of that shape with a small brush and pull out some details. Could be wiring, it could be a figure, it could be a platform in this case. Um, and again, my mind is sort of working on automatic, and that means that I've, uh, over the years, have sort of ingrained this stuff in muscle memory, and I know which brush to go to, and um, there's less cross-examination when I'm painting. I'm painting more uh, uh, with a pretty uh, confident sense of what I need to do and which brush to do it with. But this comes with, you know, a lot of painting, a lot of experience. And um, the benefit of that is you feel much freer. You feel more um, able to improvise. And that's an important aspect, I believe, in, in any painting media, maybe particularly watercolor, is being able to take advantage of things that might not have gone according to plan and being, being able to stay out of panic mode and uh, resolving the painting using that mistake to your benefit. Well, you can see the f finished painting here. The highlights have been applied to the figures, a bit of orange color to counter all these blues, uh, some scumbling in the back, uh, but you can see now I think that that shadow literally glows because of the underpainting. I hope that this exercise has been helpful not only in how to manage a, an um, unusual subject, plain on a tarmac, but how to uh, work with washes and create luminosity. And finally, how to think about using the brush in different ways uh, to evoke power and subtlety and energy in your paintings.